you take us back to, to when a lot of the corporate actions processing was manual? You know, it wasn't that long ago. Um, corporate actions in itself are just a, um, a cacophony of problems because somebody at, in a company somewhere wanted to do something with the stock. Maybe they wanted to lower the price of the stock. Maybe they wanted to ultimately raise the price of the stock. Maybe they wanted to um, pull in shares in order to, to stop liquidity. Or maybe they wanted to increase liquidity in, in their company. So what we've always had to do is react. We don't necessarily have um, too much advance notice. And that's still prevalent today. But when we had to do it manually, we would get letters or we would get faxes. There was no email communication. There was no swift communication. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do is take whatever information that we might have received, mm -hmm. might have even been in the newspaper because there were many. Uh, I basically do international corporate action. So it, it might have been the usual way to do it, just announcing it in a newspaper. Mm -hmm. So we might have gotten the first pieces of information from the newspaper. And then you had to call and you had to send faxes to, our, to the custodians who might have been holding those shares. Mm -hmm. The information was so slow to come. We might have missed dates. Uh, we might not have been able to act as swiftly as we should have. But that wasn't our fault because the, everything was a manual process. What ultimately has occurred was the, the, the corporate action still had to be facilitated, mm -hmm. whether it was done as well as could be expected or properly. Mm -hmm. But if stock had to be called in, it still had to be called in. Um, if we were distributing, it had to be distributed. But the manual process was basically the time crippler mm. in any transaction that we were trying to do. If you were expecting... Could you, yeah, could you give me a sense like how long it took then for a specific corporate actions process to... to I can, I can, uh, dividend, I can, I can tell you right off the bat, perfect example. Um, in the early days of my career, if you will, going back 20 and 25 years, in order to pay a dividend, cash dividend, very easy, right? The money comes in. From the time the money came into the bank, mm -hmm. we had 15 days to just mail out that check. Oh. You were expecting money, you got money, but it was potentially three weeks after I got the money. That's because checks had to be driven. And all the books and records had to be changed individually. Because remember, we're, not, we're talking about times when there weren't as many computers as there mm -hmm. are now. People were walking around with a computer in their pocket. Now, standard, three days. Mm -hmm. So the dividends, most dividends will be paid automatically right into an account. Mm -hmm. And if there's a check that has to be drawn, it would probably be three days. But when you think about the difference between 15 days and three days, that's remarkable. Where, where do you think firms are now with automation and, and corporate actions processing? They're really being forced to do as much as possible. But with the regulatory changes that are coming on a regular basis, depending upon whether it's tax or whether it's uh, uh, something that the SEC has implemented for um, any money laundering or something along that line, um, Automation has definitely improved the entire process, but it needs to be, more has to be done, it needs to be faster, and it's also the demand of all of the investors who want things instantaneously. We're living in a world now where you can take your cell phone out of your pocket and you can transfer money. I could give you money right mm -hmm. here as we're talking because I have an account at, at a bank and I know your email address and I can send you money. Well, the investor uh, uh, community wants that same type of speed and accuracy. If you can talk to anybody on Facebook or on Twitter instantly, why can't your broker 
do an instantaneous transaction. And that's where on, I think we're going, mm -hmm. ultimately. What standards and initiatives do you think will help firms embrace more automation? Standards. Uh, besides perfection, mm -hmm. which is the ultimate standard, obviously. Um, I, I think that, <laughs> as much as I hate the word regulation, the, there has to be innovation to that regulation to the point that a bank or a broker or a dealer can actually facilitate whatever transaction there is. Rules have to be set, and, and we don't like to hear rules and regulations, but unfortunately, nobody is going to comply because you or I turned around and said, come on, it's a good idea. This is not a dinner date. This, is, this isn't mm -hmm. something, um, uh, an arrangement to go to a park. Mm -hmm. This is something that has, is really changing the atmosphere or the environment of the financial world. And you can't, can't have a viable global economy without having instantaneous um, transactions. And that's where the automation comes in, but somebody has to say it has to happen in order for it to go forward. Should that be the SEC, FINRA? Or? Well, it has to be a regulator, and, mm -hmm. and the FINRA is, at, in my opinion, is probably the regulator who could do this, but mm -hmm. what would their motivation be? Mm -hmm. So I think part of it would have to be um, a combination of factors. It might be the exchanges, it might be the trading platforms who are getting the pressure from the issuers and, mm -hmm. and the investment community who have to bring it up to the regulators and to the commission in order to be able to push this through and make it, and make it a real um, event.